How is everybody doing? Hello? Hello? Hello, teacher. It is the I connect the listener. Hello, teacher. Hello, Welcome teacher. Everybody to your class number 10. We are going to finish today our unit number two. And uh Today we have a unit to review. Hello, it means we have a vocabulary practice and also we are going to remember all the structures that we studied during the unit two. Okay. Um I know we're from okay with this. Hello, teacher. Hello. Hello, teacher. Hello. Hello, teacher. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, teacher. Good evening. Hello, teacher. Hello. Okay. Well, I hope you can hear me, guys. Uh, I didn't have any feedback, so I'm going to start a class, all right? I'm going to start a class. ¿Sí me escuchan todos? Hello? Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. I was so worried because I thought you didn't listen to me. All right, there you go. Thank you. Okay, people. Oh, thank you, Saul. I didn't see your uh, message before. Thank you. Okay, we're going to start a class. Uh, we lost about five minutes already. Uh, just checking the audio, but it was okay, right? Okay, uh, today we have our review unit, and this is a vocabulary practice. So we want to introduce the class uh, officially, right? We will do this in order. 
Okay, um, there we have it. Okay, thank you very much everybody for being here. And I hope everybody is ready to start a class right now. The objective today is that you will be able to assess your comprehension and application of vocabulary used during the, during the unit FEM, okay? Bien, por ahí les mandé una canción. I sent a song. Did you listen to the song? ¿Oyeron la canción? Okay, meanwhile, I call the roll. You will listen to the song. Listen to the song, okay? Are you guys ready? Please turn your camera on, and when I call your name, please say present. Aida Eugenia Ramirez Chavez. Alma Yamilet Hernandez de Vasquez. Present teacher. Okay. Carlos Edgardo Vázquez Espino. Carlos Eduardo Alarcón Galdames. Eh, Carlos Ernesto Galán Serrano, Damaris Lisset Guevara Herrera, Damaris, oh. Evelyn Yajaira Martínez de Jacinto, Fernando Enrique Martínez Macín. Freddy Enrique Vázquez Solórzano. Okay. Gabriela Lisset Hernández Cruz. María Isabel Rivas Guevara. Marta Alicia Rivera Sosa. Present teacher. Thank you. Marta Estera Ayala Díaz. Present teacher. Ronaldo Josué Guerrero Hernández. Rosa Estela Polanco. Present teacher. Okay. Saúl Álvarez Pacheco.
Stephanie Magalia Maya Reyes. She is a listener. Hola, hello, teacher. Hello, Saul. Hoy sí me escucha, teacher. Yes, Saul, I can hear you now. Ok, teacher, ahí le estuve escribiendo, pero no sé si he visto mis mensajes aquí en el Zoom. Disculpa, que al inicio tenía problemas. Oh, all right, all right. But now, are you going to be able to participate? Or just as a listener, still at, uh, at work? Teacher, I, I, sí, teacher, estoy, estoy en un evento ahorita. Voy a estar como uh, listener. All right, all right. Thank you for letting Acá me en know. oficina. Si lo logro terminar okay. antes, me conecto. Hey, gracias. Ok, there you are. I have a problem with Si ¿Sí están escuchando la canción, ¿verdad? ¿Están escuchando no, la canción care. que mandé? Por ahí les dije sí. yo que en el WhatsApp les mandé sí, el link mismo, para una canción. Otro. Eh, Return to Sender. Es otra. Pero la mandó al WhatsApp. Yes. Es de Elvis Presley. Es de Elvis Presley. Ahorita no escucho, teacher, porque no la he escuchado. Ok, por eso les dije yo, cuando yo esté llamando la, la perdón, pasando la asistencia, ustedes oyen la canción, ¿ok? Vale, vamos a ver, pues. Um, Is it Presley? Uh, uh, Presley? Yes, Elvis Presley's um, song. Yes. Okay, so let's retell the story. What happened in the song?
What is the sun about? Okay, let's start by steps. Okay, let's start by the first step. So, can you name all the verbs in the past tense that you heard in the song? Yes, teacher. Uh, um, I think. Okay. Mm -hmm. All the verbs in the past that you heard in the song. Add. I'm sorry, Freddie. Excuse me. Excuse me. I hear two voices. Uh huh. I think Tad. H A D. Like this. D D. Had. Okay. Yeah. I hear a a H A G. That's why. Okay. There you go. Mm -hmm. Had and Alma, what did you say? I'm sorry. Escuché otra voz por ahí. Drop it. Drop it. Dropped. 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 Verbs in past. Rosa Estela. Evelyn Yajaira. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry? Wrote. W R O T E. Yeah. yeah. Regular. It's <laughs> only regular. Only those? Okay. Uh, didn't you listen to this other one? Put. Yeah. Took. Took. I mean. Took. Took. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. What is the story of this song about? What's happening over there? What did happen? Let's start by saying that a letter is written, right? It's about a letter. A letter is written. So who wrote the letter? Who wrote the letter? Who wrote the letter? Elvis. Okay, the man, let's say. <laughs> Because in that case, maybe it wasn't him, right? It's a man or a lover or somebody, uh, I don't know, he's like doing or making an impression, right? A man wrote a letter, right? Okay. Uh, it, it could be Elvis, right? Of course, it could be. Yeah. But 
let's say it's a man, right? Who returned the letter to the sender? Who returned the letter to the sender? The carter? The postman, right? Oh, postman. The postman. Okay, well, he gave the letter back, right? But who sent it? Huh? Who returned it? Hmm? The, the woman, let's say, right? The woman. And why did she return the letter? Why did she return the letter? No. No, address. No. No, sorry. Address, no. No respect. Uh -huh. They are uh, lovers, but una pelea de llamadas. Ah, okay, because, yes, exactly. Because a lover spat. Okay, spat. I don't remember if it is with a double T. Do you remember? Not the chart. No, it's double T. Is it a double T? Okay. Love is that. Mm -hmm. Okay, like a quarrel, right? Like a quarrel, a discussion. Uh, they have a disagreement. Yeah, it's not that they fight with hands and, you know, <laughs> pulling the hair. No, just uh, disagreement, bad words, maybe. So that's a love is that. And then they, recon uh, they reconcile, right? So they uh, make peace right they um love each other again so that's a lover's path okay did you like the song did you like the song les gustó la canción did you like the song no teacher <laughs> no why not come on uh-huh tell me why not bad money not it's by Bad Bunny. <laughs> ah, okay. Now I understand. Uh huh. Yeah. But actually, only like, only like Bad Bunny and so... say. <laughs> and saying things. Oh my goodness. No, no way. Profanity. No, oh my God. <laughs> okay. Well, no, actually, um, this is a very good song. I, I really love this song because it's easy to understand. It's really easy to understand. It's a story. Uh, it has uh, just two or three characters in the song. Okay. And they do the thing uh, time after time, right? So they do the same and they sing the same from the beginning to the end. And it's a very short song. Then my recommendation now is that you must listen to this kind of music. Why? Because it's going to enrich your vocabulary. Okay? It's going to enrich your vocabulary and you will um, develop the listening skills. All right? Listening skills. All right. It's easy to understand the, the accent and the speed of the song is not too fast. You have to listen uh, to listen the kind of music in order to learn English. Okay, now let's go back just a little bit, bit in time, right? And let's remember the first topics we show, we studied. And remember the headquarters and the branches? What is a, that word? What does headquarters mean? Headquarters. What are the... Headquarters. How can you define that? Mm -hmm. A definition of headquarters. 
be a, a center of this business. Okay, the main office, right? The main. So it means, right, that the companies have like the administration, all these uh, roles of human resources, recruitment, and um, I don't know, accounting, and these administrative activities are all uh, unit, um, I'm sorry, are all joined in one big office, right? And one big office. And then they have maybe stores or they have branches if they are administrative too they the field where they are maybe they have branches or agencies right stores retailer stop sure i'm sorry uh, shops uh there are also warehouses right uh distributor houses so they have different kind of um offices around the places according according to their activities. So where are Super Selectus headquarters, guys? Where are Super Selectus headquarters? Can you please Google it? The central office of a company? Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, where are Super Selectus headquarters? Where is it located? Yeah, mm -hmm. In El Salvador? Yes, of course, in El Salvador, but where exactly? What city is this main office? They are in Google it, Google it, please. Google it. In the residenciales, pero no se dice. Ajá, ajá. Like, um, Residential, residential area. Okay, so where is that? Mm -hmm. Or neighborhood. Neighborhood is a very good word too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, let's say. Olympic. Small. Okay, Olympic. Mm -hmm. Olympi well, we Avenue. could say Ol uh -huh. Olympica, let's say Avenue, right? Because that's the name, right? Even though residential, we could say just, uh, well, if we say residential, it's okay. And then you say Los Cipreses, no. What did you say? Las Esmeraldas, no. Uh, ¿Cómo me dijo Alma? What did you say? Um, oh, 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 small. Uh -huh. En los malls siempre hay un super selecto. En los centros comerciales. Oh, oh, but those are branches. Okay, those are branches. Aha, uh -huh. we are talking about the main office. The main office, right? Aha. Uh -huh. La central, okay? It's not a store. They are the big offices, administrative offices, okay? So in Olympica Avenue, that's good. But we don't say in when it is an avenue. We say on when it's an avenue and a street, okay? In when it's a city, when it's a, a say, what's this name? Urbanization, urban. Allow me to get this word for you later. I will say later. Okay. Um, okay, they are on Olympica Avenue. Uh, and what's the other street? There is another street. 
where, where it really is. Because Olympic Avenue goes this way, and then it goes the the um the main offices are right on a street, not on the avenue. Okay. But Are let's progreso? say that El Progreso. Is that the okay? So eh, Progreso Street. Okay, there you go. And where is this located? In San Salvador. Okay. So if you see on Olympica Avenue and El Progreso Street in San Salvador. Okay, now let's talk about how many branches that Super Opuestos have. I'm sorry, Super Selectos have. Ahora sí, son los que están en todo el país. Exactly, but you have to say how many, so you can Google it because we need a number, right? When they ask how many, they are asking for an amount, a number. 154, 200. Tell me, Carlos Delgado. Again? The Super Selector have 107 branches. Okay. Mm -hmm. You could say they have 107 branches uh, in El Salvador, right? right? Okay. Now, how many branches does Banco Agricola have in El Salvador? Do you know? Can you Google it? The CDA is in the center financier, uh, Centro Financiero. Mm -hmm. It's for El Salvador del Mundo. Wow, okay, so that's the headquarters, right? That is. Um, yes. yeah. mm -hmm. um, okay, great. You say, <laughs> uh, hmm? so yeah, most of 1,000 points of <laughs> Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. All right. It's not just a branches as we know, right? But there are other like subsidiaries, right? Subsidiaries. Okay, that we we have uh one thousand, right? That was the number I was looking for. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but it's um, it's a number, right? It's a number because the agencies, I don't know if they count them these, um, the same, right? I don't know if they count them the same, but we can say a thousand, right? Around in 
Okay. Found and found. Yeah. Okay. Now, if we think about branches and headquarters, as a manner to remember this point. It can be worldwide, okay? Worldwide. It can be also, right, this one, for example, it's worldwide, yeah? Um, let me see. For example, Unilever is a worldwide company, right? Worldwide. Like this, worldwide. Yeah, all over the world, yeah. around the world. Okay, this is um, when it uh, when we say mundial, right? We say worldwide. Yeah, all over the world, around the world. For example, this company, uh, the headquarters are in Los Angeles, California, right? In how many branches do you see? How many branches do you see? One, two, three, four, five branches right five branches around the world yeah because it's almost in the five continents right almost yeah we could say around the world yeah all right we have some other examples like this one, other one and this is why it is important to network, okay? Networking is really important, yeah? For example, the headquarters in New York, right? And then branches uh, around the world in Europe and Japan and in India and in Africa, Australia and the West Coast of the United States, right? Maybe they have to um a get this new market right they have to open the latin yeah latin america a market it's the only market that where they are not right where they are not in position all right so that's about branches and um headquarters all right Let's go back and check some vocabulary, all right? Teacher. Tell me. Uh, so you repeat the correct answer for that question? Which question, I'm sorry? Uh, uh, the answer were how many branches have uh, the company in El Salvador, for example. Okay. How is the, the correct the correct answer? I okay, am you can taking... answer uh -huh. oh. you can answer they are they have right like this. How many branches, right? Oh, shit. Oh, so here we have it. How many branches does Banco Agricola have in El Salvador, right? They, Banco Agricola, they have, and then you say the number, right? You can say around El Salvador because it's a, the national level, right? Or it can be a regional level, maybe in oh. Central America. So you can put anything that uh, corresponds, right? And when then we I have, 
Mm -hmm. Then you have this other, for example, how many branches does the first election have? They have 107 branches in El Salvador. It means that they don't have out or abroad, right? Uh, they don't have foreign branches. And for example, yeah. when we talk about the headquarters, we are talking about a big main office, a large one, or maybe uh, the one that joins all the administrative activities of the company, right? So that's what headquarters mean because it's a military thing, right? So you can answer there if you're talking about the exact location, like avenues, streets, and you give the address where this is located, then you say on, okay, on. But if you are talking about the city, the country, the region, the continent, then you're gonna say in, okay? Is it okay, Freddy? Yes, but All right. um, mm -hmm. uh, another question is your point. When I don't know how many branches have exactly, um, how can I say? You can say, for example, if when... you don't know an exact no number, you can say some, depending. You can say many. Yeah, or because it's countable. So you can say a lot of, yeah. So you can say many, some, well, or a lot of. It depends. Some, like less, right? Many, more than some. And a lot, more than many, right? So that's the order over there. Yeah. So they have many. They have, uh, the first one is some. Oof. <laughs> they have many and they have a lot. Mm -hmm. And what is the contrary? If they don't have a lot, if they, if they don't have many or they don't have some, then you're going to say they, you can add not, right? Not. And you can say just, uh, they have not many, okay? They have not many. They have just... Sorry, uh, just some, okay? They have and a few, okay? A few. Yeah, there you go. Remember to add the other part, right? Branches, 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 branches. All right, there you go. What happens if they don't have branches? Uh, what's the way to answer? Well, do this over here. They have no branches. Okay. There you go. They have no branches. Or they have not any branches okay you can say they don't have this is the easiest way they don't have branches this will be the easiest right this is the easiest right they don't have branches there you go very good question Fred all right. Is there any question so far? Uh, Sorry, teacher. De todas esas formas, es respuesta. Exactly. Mm -hmm. When you don't know, 
the amount. Cuando usted no sabe la cantidad, puede usar, dependiendo. Si es que no, no tiene eh, sucursales, no tiene agencias, entonces va a usar estas de arriba. Pero si tiene algunas, si tiene muchas, si tiene un montón, que este va a usar estas. ¿Ok? Si tiene pocas, va a decir a few. ¿Ya? Yeah. Thank you, teacher. Okay, there you go. Are we okay, guys? Okay, then let's do a reading exercise. Let's do a reading exercise and then we go to the vocabulary thing over there and the vocabulary practice that we have in the manual, okay? I will present a video. This video has some interferences, sound interferences, but it's good, all right? It's, you can hear the, the voice and you can read. So read along, okay? There we go. The topic is about networking, networking. One moment. No, guys, I cannot play it. I cannot play it, so I will play it uh, in another class. So let's go and read. There we go. Let's go and read. We're going to go into the small time over here. So that's too much wasting. All right, here we go. Please turn to page number 20. Five and your manuals. Page 25. Okay. Well, actually, it's 26. 26. 26. This is about networking. Do you remember what networking is? What is networking? We are going to see what networking is. Let's try to see. Okay, it says last week I had lunch with Allison, a new member of my network contacts. We saw each other at three seminars over the past year, but we really did not know each other very well. I set a goal this year. I will have a one-on-one -on -one networking meeting with at least with at least five new contacts this year. My fifth contact meeting was Allison. Our meeting was so rewarding that I want to share the experience. During lunch, Allison mentioned that she was shy by nature. In the past, she said, she worried a lot before going to large networking events. I felt surprised because she trusted me that feeling. I got to know more about her, the industry she works in, and about her expectations for the future. I gained more than a new contact. I passed from small talk to smart talk. Here is my advice to you. When you attend business events, do not just go and discuss business problems and solutions. Try to get to know at least Three new people by sharing a one-on-one -on -one networking coffee, lunch, or dinner. There are several benefits of this practice. You expand your contacts, improve your networking skills, 
and you build meaningful connections with people in the industry. Okay. When did this happen? Last week. Okay. Last week. This is an experience that Miss Tate is talking, right? About Alison. Yeah? Alison. Alison and Miss Tate are they uh, starring here, right? Okay. Please, uh, do you have any question about the vocabulary you heard and you read? Do you have any question at the moment? What is meaningful? Meaningful. Meaningful means that, that exactly, that means, que significa, lleno de significado de contenido. Mm -hmm. Importante también podría decirse. Any other question? No questions? All right, so I need three volunteers. One, two, and three to read. Yeah, teacher. One. Okay, please. Last week, I had lunch with Allison, a new member of my network contacts. We saw each other at three seminars over the past years, but we really did not we really did not know each other very well. I set a goal last year. I will have a one-on-one -on -one networking uh, I will have a one of on one networking meeting with at least five new contacts this year. My five contact meetings was Allison. Our, meet, our meeting was so re, re, rewarding. Rewarding? Rewarding. Um, our meeting was, okay. Our meeting was so rewarding that I want to share the experience. Okay, this is my fifth. Fifth contact. Not five, fifth. Fifth, yeah. fifth contact. All right. Mm -hmm. Oh, my fifth contact. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Carlos, please continue. I lunch, Alison mentioned that she was shy by nature. In the past, she said she worked a lot before going to large networking events. I felt surprised. Because she trust, trusted uh, me that feeling. I got to know more about her, the industry she works in, and about her expectation for the future. I gained more than a new contact. I passed from a small talk to a smart talk. Very good. Who wants to go next? OK, please. Mm -hmm. Here is, here is my advice to you. When you attend business events, do not just go and discuss business problem and solution. Try to get to know at least three new people by sharing a one-on-one -on -one network coffee, lunch, or dinner. There are several, several benefits of this practice you expand your contacts improve your networking skill and you will meaningful meaningful connection in the industry in the industry okay thank you very much all right people um any question at the moment Um, 
what is rewarding? Rewarding. Um, que, eh, que le deja a usted una, una satisfacción. Es algo satisfactorio. ¿Mm? Porque si no, no puede mucho provecho. Ajá. Bueno. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. There, there, maybe it's my air, airport. Can you repeat, please, Freddy? What did you say? No, no, I only say I got it. Ah, okay. All right, thank you. Yeah, the signal is kind of unstable, right? The signal is kind of unstable, the connection maybe. All right, let's read these other box. Okay, let's read this other box. When networking with people at meetings, conferences, association meetings or conventions learn to ask interesting information questions to get the conversation going change the standard what do you do for a living for a more creative question to enrich the human exchange like what inspires you and your job what are your daily challenges all right now can you please read these other box, Freddy? This one? When networking with people at a meeting, conference, association, meetings, or conventions, learn to ask interesting information, questions, to get the conversation going, change the standard what do you do for a living for a more creative question to enrich the human exchange like what inspires you in your job what are your daily challenges very good thank you very much is there any question about this uh, reading in this green box Yesterday, we learned that the uh, questions or information questions to get the conversation going are called follow-up questions, right? Follow-up questions to maintain the flow of the conversation. All right, so now let's go and do this true and false activity, right? According to the reading. This is according to the reading. Rosa, do you mind come to the board? Do you mind coming to the board? Rosa? Yes, teacher. Okay, do you mind coming to the board and uh, uh, underline true or false according what you discuss with your classmates? Okay. Okay. The first, um, Alison and me stay, saw each other for the first time last week. Is false? What do you think, class? Mm -hmm. 
No, is is true. Is the first time. Mm, es que dice last week. Last week es la siguiente semana, ¿verdad? No. Ah, oh, it's true. Respuesta definitiva. Yes. Pero no la puedo marcar, dicha. You are a mute teacher. I will share it in a different way and I will give you my remote, okay? Okay. You can go up there, you can go over here and use this one. But guys, can you hear me? The first yeah? is true. Are you sure? Are you sure? Why don't you go and read again? Read again the part where it says that Allison and the state uh, saw each other for the first time last week. So go up there and read that part and you will see maybe oh, something no. different. Nice <laughs> fault. <laughs> Como de la llamada quiere. ¿De quién vas a llamar, Rosas? No, es false. Vale, 50, 50. Uh, okay, you may go up there. You, scroll it up. Scroll, scroll it up. Uh -huh. Pero no puedo marcarla. Um, but yes, you can do it. Go, go, I don't know if you go up there to the left corner. Well, yeah, it's the left corner. It's the right in the other way. Ah, there you are. There. <laughs> there you have it. Rosa, váyase a la esquina de la pantalla arriba y mira que dice draw, arriba con un plumoncito. En mi pantalla, en mi, en mi... La izquierda. No, no, ajá, eso, izquierda. Ah, en su pantalla. Sí, porque usted está en mi compu ahorita. Ay. Ah. Ay. Ajá. Es que no, yo me Ya me va a borrar todo la sí, no, que está, que está. <ríe> Ok, váyanse aquí arriba donde dice draw. Ve que está aquí arriba, están todos los controles donde está el... Te... Ok, uh, muévase un poquito más para la izquierda. Bueno, well, es que su izquierda quizás es su derecha, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Ok, ahí. Draw. Uh -huh. Now, take it. Yeah. There you go. Me abroma la tecnología, teacher. <laughs> There you are. 
Ajá. Uh -huh. Are you sure this is false? Pero sí están seguros que es falso. Hay oportunidad en la llamada, dice Don Yes, Freddy. because uh -huh. in the text eh, say um, she see the Allison eh, three three seminars over oh, past year. Okay. Pero también así como decimos en español, Ajá. que no le decimos la Allison, tampoco en inglés. Y Allison, mm -mm. no le decimos a Allison. <ríe> ya no le podemos decir eh, la Allison tampoco el en lenguaje, español. El lenguaje. <ríe> Salvador. <¿Cómo sabita? ríe> Allison. No, eh, eh. Ajá. Okay. Eh, pero si se habían visto. They say. Ajá. No, they see. They three, saw. Um, they saw each other. They saw in the three seminars. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so it wasn't the first time. In, right? in the past. All right, in number two. Number two. Hey, everybody, please participate. Hey, everybody. Uh -huh. Miss State set a networking goal for this year. Yes. Ayúdeme, Fernando. It's true. It's true. You trust too much in your mind. Alison but it's Coco. okay. <laughs> Alison confessed she had hated It's his fault. <laughs> Miss State and Allison passed from a small talk to a smart talk during during lunch. A small talk? No, it's false. Miss State may mention three benefits of one on one no uh, networking meetings. Yes. Están de acuerdo, compañero. Sí, sí, Rosa, sí, sí. Sí, Rosa, sí, Rosa. No one wants to go to read again, hey, guys. You make a reading, right? You make a reading. Um, do you mind giving back? The, the remote. Okay, just. Okay, I will stop that remote. And now let's read again because it says last week I had lunch with Allison, a new member of, net, uh, of my network contacts. We saw each other at three seminars over the past year. Mm -hmm. So it was not the last, the first time. And then it says, Miss Tate set a new, uh, I'm sorry, a networking goal for this year. So let's go and read what about the goal because it says, aha, uh -huh. but we really didn't know. Blah, blah, blah. I sent a goal last year. Mm -hmm. I would have a one on one networking meeting with at least five new contacts ah, this year. All right, so yes, the goal was the last year for this year. All right, then it is true, right? It is true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, true. Alison confessed she hated 
networking events. Actually, she was worried, not hated, right? She does. She didn't hate mm -hmm. the activities. She was shy by nature. I'm sorry, by nature. And it says mm, she worried a worried. lot. She worried mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah, but she didn't hate this. So yes, it is no false, problem. right? It is false. Then it says, Miss Tate and Alison passed from small talk to smart talk during lunch. Let's go and see, because it says I passed from small talk to smart talk. Oh. Yeah, but let's think if they did it during lunch or not, right? Because it says, ah, during lunch, yay, right? During lunch, Alison mentioned she was shy by nature. In the past, she said she worried. Da, 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 da. I got to know more about her, the industry she works in, and about her expectations for the future. I gained ah more than any contact. Yes, this was true. It was during the lunch that she passed from small talk to smart talk. All right, this is true. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay because uh -huh, it's comprehension. So you have to think and look and re-read and you didn't go back to the reading. Miss Tate mm -hmm. mentioned three benefits of one-on-one -on -one networking meetings. Let's count. Let's count. You expand your contacts, one. Improve your one. skills, two. And, ah, okay, then this is the third one. Yeah, three benefits, right? There you go. Three benefits. Oh. Yeah, we did it. We did it. We did it. We did it. All right. Mm -hmm. Question about the a Any question about, can you hear me? Yes. Complicated or teacher. It changed. <laughs> All right then, no questions, are we okay? Let's go to vocabulary thing. Aha, uh -huh, this is for fun. All right, we're going to talk about company. Well, no, this is vocabulary to talk about a company. All right, so we, let's read the words, industry. Staff, networking, brunch, guests, headquarters, small talk, manufacturer, personnel, expertise, right? Expertise. Uh huh. We have to look for these words. Tap in this word search. All right. Everybody, please come to the board and um, find out the word. Come to the board, please. Person. Good, Martalicia. Person. Huh? Brunch. Brunch. Expertise. Person arriba en la primera fila. Oh. Y para abajo, manufacture. Manufacture. Ahí cabe.
Okay, I think we're finished, right? Did we? Didn't we? Yeah, personal expertise. There we go. Okay, now we are going to say the words. All right, we are going to say the words. I want to hear you um, repeating the words. Okay, then we have to uh, make some sentences. Let, let's say industry, industry, staff, staff, <laughs> networking, networking, branch, branch, okay. guests, guests. Headquarters, headquarters, small talk, small talk, manufacture, manufacture, please repeat, personnel, 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 expertise, expertise, expertise. okay. Now let's write only five sentences. We have to find, I mean, choose five uh, words and you write five sentences, okay? So let's go to the breakout room. You write these five sentences, but also we write five information questions in the simple present. Okay, we are going to use oversee, manufacture, supervise, be in charge of, and network. Okay, we are going to use these to write five information questions. Please don't just use what do you, what do you. Mm -mm. We are going to use what. We will use when. Yeah, where, All right. why, yeah, and how, yeah. Okay, please use different words. With a WH. Remember, you can use phrases, right? You can use phrases like what department, um, uh, let's say where exactly, where currently, whatever, right? How many, how much, how long, how often. So you can use any phrase, any a question phrase, not only the word. Remember that with the information questions, we have WH words, but also WH phrases, question phrase. Okay, let's go to the breakout room and let's write five sentences with the vocabulary words and five information questions, okay? Any question about the activity? Repeating an integer, please. The first activity. Hello. Teacher. 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 <laughs> no, no, escucha. No. Teacher. Repeat, please. Activity. Hello. <laughs> no.
Alessandro na lei dele de renda. <risos> Ai, que tá mandando Você está castigando com o látigo del desprezo. Ah, um momento Ai, de meu. silêncio. Pero se está riendo, ¿será que si nos escucha? No sé. <ríe> Teacher. Teacher. No Uy. está haciendo lo que le hacemos nosotros cuando nos pregunta y no contesta. <ríe> Nos está metiendo en el grupo. ¿eh? Ah, Ah, sí, sí, sí. Ah, I have a question, teacher. <laughs> But can you hear I me? Yes, Yes, but you teacher. can Te quiero. hear us. No. <laughs> <laughs> A pura seña. Now I can hear you guys. I'm sorry. Back. <laughs> Estaba preguntando I'm sorry. por la, por la primera actividad, Tich. Oh, no way. The first activity. Ah, okay. I thought it was a joke, Freddie. I'm sorry. Okay. The first activity is the five sentences with the vocabulary words. Okay. Five sentences with the vocabulary words in simple present. Okay. Well, I, I remember it says that. Got it? Uh, but what what vocabulary? Industry, staff, networking, branch. You have to choose five words. Uh, oh, that's okay. Okay. There you go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. When I put my my AirPods back, uh, the song started to 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 play. So this is why. I'm... Right. Okay. Just the last thing I have to send. Just the last part, right? Uh, you have it already. So you may go everybody to the breakout rooms. Supervisar. Yes, it's a synonym of supervise. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Bien, George. Para cargo. Entonces, hacemos las primeras cinco. De las diez palabras. Branch. Puede compartir pantalla. Industry. You learn industry is there. In sharp. The screen. Vale. First. 
Tenemos que elegir cinco. Una, hola. Tenemos que elegir cinco. Five words. Cinco palabras, dice. Y como palabras, elaborar oraciones. Pero que ya no alcanzo a ver ahí la quiero ver. Mm. Tampoco. La primera sería industria. Cualquiera. Ajá, ajá. Eh, my company have three branch. No. Sí, sí, puede ser. Ella había puesto yo aquí. Ah, es que no tenía el teléfono. <risas> Pero sí ve mi pantalla, ¿verdad? Ahorita sí, ya la vi. Vale. Esa es la segunda. ¿Qué otra podemos? The second. Maybe. Or person then. Oh, you ask me to teach you. You not question. I uh, working. Vaya. ¿La segunda? De Pharmacy, Velos. De Pharmacy, Velos, to the... No es medical. Medical. ¿Así? Eh... Uh, teacher dice que pharmaceutical industry. Oh. Mira el chat. Voy. Oh, pharmaceutical. Así. Pronounce that pharmaceutical. No, no, no. The pharmacy. Oh. Okay, the pharmacy belongs to the pharmaceutical industry. Oh. Dice porque no me estaba ignorando. I'm sorry. I will never do that again. Pues si no castigo, dice Cher. Para que sientan bien. <risa> no, lo que me hacen a mí cuando les pregunto ajá, 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 nadie ajá. contesta is correct teacher the pharmacy belong to the pharma phar pharmaceutical industry No va, quiero ver, no, va, no va repetido pharmacy. The pharmacy belongs to the pharmaceutical, pharma, pharmaceutical industry. Ya se puede. Yeah, well. It's no, it's no Vaya, problema. El otro. Eh. Ah, el otro bien podría ser. Thank you. 
Va, este, el otro estaba diciendo de su revance, ¿qué dije? Teacher. Y solo teacher. Yes, here I am, tell me. La diferencia entre oversee y supervise. Actually, it's not that much difference. They are synonyms. Okay. ¿Cómo se dice quién? ¿Tú? Siempre es mío. Tengo la mentalidad. No. W H O. Oh. Ah. Uh -huh. uh. Uh -huh. mm. No me acuerdo cuando iban a reclamar. ¿Qué hablar con el gerente? Perfecto. Porque tenemos que hacer lo mismo para, para estas uh -huh. cinco también. Lo voy a escribir como me dice si está bien. Y usted, América, ¿qué es? Entonces le faltan los auxiliares a esas que he hecho. Sí. 
la, la número dos que qué, qué, qué dice qué significa ¿Cuánto? Yo solo puedo decir solo para, que, para ver qué idea puede, se nos ocurre para hacer la, la, las frases. Lo que pasa es que ahorita sí no, no, no se me ocurre nada. Voy a poner, ahí le falta también el. Ya no tengo falta. Sí, todos los verbos. que tiene el mismo apellido que yo ¿Tienes otros apellidos? Sí. Ella es mi compañera. Okay. Es que no lleva el auxiliar. Mira, mamá. Entonces puede cambiar este el de la segunda, quitar el who y ponerle el sujeto. La segunda. Uh -huh. Esa creo que no tienen que llevar esa las W. Go to the chat. El sujeto después del dado.
aquí me está diciendo el gerente de la primera, ¿verdad? Yes, that's as a matter of an example, Carlos. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can okay, follow that I'm example, not... or can you you can use it? Sí, por eso que puse esto. A ver si está, pero es lo que pasa es que escuché lo demás que me habían dicho. El sujeto. Ahí. Ah, entonces. Sí, como tú. No. Eh, mm, no. Quita el ojo. lo cambia o lo cambia antes del das ¿Qué, qué, qué le pongo ahí? antes del das se va a poner how often antes how often das Oversee, cambia teacher si estamos usando the manager, cambia overseas, oversee a uh, overseas. No, it doesn't no, change because you have to use the base form when you In use the form. auxiliary verb. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh. Cuando estamos en DAS, se mantiene yeah. este. Yeah. Mm -hmm. En forma regular. Correcto. Cuando, uh, uh, ¿qué es Benny? Uh, 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 the, the network, ajá. ¿Cuándo se revisa network? Usando network. Ese va en el número, en el, en, el, en el último, donde dice how. ¿Cómo sería? ¿Cómo sería? Espera. Bueno. Um, a ver, ¿cuándo se da mantenimiento de la red? No, es que estamos en manufacture. Ajá, no, yo porque estaba viendo la otra. ¿Cuál? Estaba viendo. Being la... part of. ¿O cuál? No, estaba viendo network. Ah, network. Ajá. How. Con how lo tenés que hacer. Ah. Bueno. Esa. Cuando. Yo finish my no, facture. Ah, sí, no sé. When, when you finish manufacture the t-shirt. ¿Cuándo terminarás la manufactura de las camisetas? No sé si está bien escrito. Mm. ¿Qué? Está bien. 
what, what the part, no, when you finish manufacture the t-shirt is correct, teacher? Go to the chat, please. Ah, the chat. When do you check the... When? Uh-huh. Este es el... Lo que tenemos que hacer, eh, W question, first. Eh, auxiliary, más subject, verb in best form, in the complement. Lo voy a pegar aquí para mientras. Vaya, doble question. Auxiliary, híjole. What? Do o dos. O das. 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 Ajá. Así. Creo. What? That's... Uy. Uy. Uy, uy, la batería. Nunca me dura nada. Bye. Ya va a ser que cambiamos la batería. Es la compu del trabajo. <ríe> <ríe> Vaya, eh, vamos a ver. Do or does. Ok. Entonces. What does the department supervise the final product? Yo creo que está bien. What does oversight in your company in the bodega? When do you finish manufacturing? The t-shirt. Uh, what? Do, um, why? Why? We cannot make um, do and be. Be. Mm -hmm. Be in charge. You can't use. You can use do. You're going to use. Are um is. It's the only one, right? You are going to use, for example, why are you in charge of whatever you want to say. Right. <clears throat> ya no sé si están bien. No, no, es que no están viendo. Ah, mire, pues, Rosa, ahí se me ha confundido usted se ha ido por, por la tangente. <ríe> vale, va, sigamos la estructura tal como está ahí. W, question word, WH, ¿verdad? Entonces, uh -huh. luego, Por ejemplo, tenemos, la primera... uh -huh. Uh -huh. luego tenemos el auxiliar, ¿sí? Está correcto. WH, auxiliar. Ahora, ¿qué me ha puesto después del auxiliar? Or the verb. Pero eso es un verbo, ¿verdad? Entonces, hay que poner un sujeto. ¿Quién? No are. You. 
no sé si sería su compañía, porque es lo que usted está preguntando, ¿no? ¿Qué re, o sea, lo que ¿Qué queríamos es lo que poner, quiere preguntar? ¿Qué re, ajá, ¿qué revisa tu compañía en la bodega? Entonces, ¿quién revisa? La compañía, ¿va? Entonces, ese es el sujeto, ¿no? Ah, oh, sí. What does your company oversee in the warehouse, right? Así se escribe warehouse. No, check the chat. Warehouse. In the, in the warehouse, because it's not yours. It's the company's warehouse. Okay, now you continue, guys. Okay. Um, when, um, primero lo que queremos preguntar, ¿cuándo terminas, cuándo terminas de, factu de manufacturar las camisetas? When do... Aquí no va. When do you... Finish. Después de este verbo finish, necesitamos un yeah. ing. No. Finish manufacturing. No, no, no. Finish y luego manufacturing. Oh. Finish manufacturing. When do you finish manufacturing the t-shirt? En esta, Fernando, ¿qué, ¿qué querías decir? Vimos otras eh, preguntas que no son de objeto, sino que son de sujeto. Y esas tienen una forma diferente. Sin el eh, verbo auxiliar. Es porque ustedes están haciendo unas así, ¿verdad? Pero la forma de esas es con who o con what, nada más. Ok, con who o con what y luego eh, el verbo en tercera persona más el complemento. ¿Ya? Al principio la tenían bien. Decía what department supervises the final product. Okay, what department supervises the final product? Okay. Why do you, aquí está mal. Fernando está ahí. Por, no, tal vez yo aquí no. Eh, vamos a ponerle... No, es que ahí en esa, lo que les decía, es la única que no va a llevar eh, ni do, ni tampoco va a llevar de un solo otro verbo, sino que la frase... Completa es be in charge of. Oh, entonces, yo conjugo el be. Acordémonos de esa clase. Conjugamos el verbo be para estas frases. Entonces, usted le está preguntando, uh, what are you in charge of? ¿Verdad? Eso es lo que estaban preguntando, si no me equivoco. Uh -huh. No, why decía, ¿verdad? Why. 
Habían pasado why. why. Entonces, why are you in charge of? Y pongan encargado de qué, vea. Uh -huh. Sin el be, sin el be. El be ya está eh, conjugado con are ahí. Uh -huh. Why are you in charge of? Why is he in charge of? Why is she? Why are we? Why are they in charge of? Okay? Okay, teacher. olvidado de nosotros que estamos. <laughs> you finish uh, maybe a long time ago. <laughs> Did you? Did you finish? Yeah. Okay. Yes. A while But, ago. Uh, we have uh, we have um do that. Uh huh. How do you say do that? That. Eh, con una, con una oración, el, el, el being charged. Mm -hmm. Bueno, no sé si la revisamos. Okay. Do you want to share your screen? Mm -hmm. Are you being okay. in charge of human resource? Ajá. Eso lo aprendimos en la clase donde vimos que eran unas frases completas y que el be siempre lo íbamos a conjugar. Entonces ahí no va be. Ya está conjugado con is. Is, is. María in charge okay. of, pero sin la ed, ¿verdad? Porque ahí solo sería in charge hasta la e. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, there you go. Mm -hmm. yes. We're read. Even though they should be WH questions because they are information questions, but it is okay. Right? Uh I would say what is Maria in charge or why is Maria in charge of human resources, right? Uh with the WH question word. Okay, number one, it says the Banco Agricola has, has, because it's it, okay? If we say they, then I use have. We, because I am included in the team of Banco Agricola, okay, then I say have. But in this case, Banco Agricola has uh, 107 branches. No apostrophe there, okay? No apostrophe because it's a plural, so you don't have to. In El Salvador, do you like the networking events? That's good, no apostrophe, because it's plural. What is the business industry? That's a very good one. Uh, the personnel is efficient, great. Are you, mm, 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 are you a guest? Ah, guest, okay? Because if you use, if you want to say, uh, this is an action, you will say, are you invited? Right, but in this case, we're using guests. So are you a guest for dinner? Uh, for dinner, mm -mm. a guest of, mm, a guest, yeah, a guest of the company. All right, there you go. But for dinner, maybe at the end, it will be better. Are you a guest of the oh. company for a dinner? Right, maybe. Yeah, it sounds better. When is the event about network this year? Oh, that's a very good question. Who is the new uh, supervisor? Okay, this is OR because you have to supervise. Who is the new supervisor? Number two. And okay, where is the manufacturer department? Well, actually, it depends if in your company they say the manufacturer 
Okay. If not, it will be the manufacturing department, ING over there. How is the process of overseeing the company? Uh, this has to take a very different uh, deal. Hold on, I guess it's almost 10, right? It's more than 10. <laughs> we passed 10. Okay. Uh, how is the the process yeah but it is to oversee not of uh will be to oversee um to oversee um, well actually in the company mm, yeah but well let's say in the company but just drop letter a at the beginning of a company that you say over there in the drop letter a is maria in charge of human resources all right yeah why is maria in charge of the human resources because it's an information question all right there you go thank you freddie it's kind of late i'm sorry i took some more minutes oh my god maybe 10 more minutes no four this only four minutes after 10, yeah. Okay, I will call the roll call, please everybody turn your camera on and when I call your name, please say present. I will do this in a very quick way, okay? Really quickly. Uh, let's start by Aida Eugenia Ramirez Chavez, Alma y Emilia Hernandez de Vasquez. Present. Carlos Edgardo Vasquez Espino. Present. Carlos Eduardo Alarcón Galdames. Carlos Ernesto Galán Serrano, Tamaris Lucet Guevara Herrera, Evelyn Yajaira Martínez de Jacinto, Fernando Enrique Martínez Macín, Fernando Noel Mauricio Cíntigo, Freddy Enrique Vázquez Solórzano, Gabriela Lucet Hernández Cruz, María Isabel Rivas Guevara. Oh, she was having trouble with the internet, right? Uh, Maria, perdón, Marta Alicia Rivera Sosa. Present teacher. Marta Estera Ayala Díaz. Present teacher. Ronaldo José Guerrero Hernández. Rosa Estela Polanco. Saúl Álvarez. Present Cintico. teacher. Ok, Rosa. Thank you, Saúl. Stephanie Magali Amaya Reyes. Ok, people, then uh, you have to submit your homework up to number 10 and also submit your midterm test please don't wait until tomorrow do it today all right um do it tonight not just for tomorrow okay don't leave for tomorrow what you can do today <laughs> yeah all right there you go guys ah, the session one on one i'm sorry Okay, um, the number 10 is for Freddy Enrique. Do you want to stay today, Freddy? Yes, I want. All right, there you go. So everybody have a very good weekend and please do your homework, submit your midterm test. See you Monday. Bye. Enjoy your weekend. See you Monday, teacher. Good night. See you. See you. Okay, here we are, Freddie. Is there any question I can help you with? Um, about the, the, the class, no, really. I just have um, some problem with organization, words, the sentence. And it's just been a problem. <laughs> Ah, the word order, word order. Bien, mire, para comenzar, or to start, is um, the basic, 
the basic form or way to order the words, as in the Spanish we do, right? As in the Spanish, uh, we always talk about someone or something, right? We always talk about someone or something. Okay, so the first thing we say is a subject, yeah? Always, always, even if it is mentioned or not, right? If it is a tacit one, you are going to use a subject. So, for example, I, right? Mm, any pronoun, any now, a name, anything, any place, any animal, whatever you talk about, uh, talk about or is the one who realizes or uh, who does the action, then it's a subject. So the first thing you are going to say in your mind is who, right? I, the dog, El Salvador, right? Subject. After the subject, this is the basic one, okay? This is the basic, basic. Okay, subject plus the verb. Okay, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if the verb is negative or the action, right? Maybe sometimes it is, I don't, or I am not, right? So it's included in the verb, right? And then after the verb, you have a complement, right? In the complement, in the complement, yeah. In the complement, you can, for example, right? Uh, have adjectives, adverbs, time time expressions, um, um, any other clause any explanation, whatever you want to say about the subject or the action, it's going in a complement, okay? Entonces, tenemos el sujeto, el verbo, el complemento. Normalmente en español es lo mismo. Lo digamos o no lo digamos, el sujeto existe, ¿verdad? Entonces, yo compro pan, ¿sí? Uh, si me pregunta cualquier cosa que me pregunte, Cuando yo respondo, voy a responder siempre ordenando las palabras de esta manera. Subject, verb, and complement. Sujeto, verbo, complemento. ¿Y a dónde fuiste? Y dice usted, fui a pasear. Ajá, pero el sujeto ahí está, aunque no lo mencionamos en español. En inglés es indispensable mencionar el sujeto. En la, el 99% de las veces. ¿Ok? Tiene que ir el sujeto. Ah, y por eso a veces es como monótono el inglés en decir I y luego I y después de la coma I y después de la coma I. Ok, siempre son oraciones completas. En español, yo fui, yo traje, yo hice, yo di, etc. Quitamos el sujeto porque nos aburre al, en español. Pero en inglés no. En inglés es importantísimo. Incluso cuando nosotros decimos, por ejemplo, eh, que... Allí hacen tortillas, decimos nosotros, ¿verdad? No hay sujeto, no hay. Es impersonal esa frase para nosotros. Hacen. ¿Quién? No nos importa, no nos importa. Una señora sabemos que hace tortillas. Porque hacen tortillas. Exacto. Pero en inglés, en inglés, ese, esa persona es they, always. Siempre va ese sujeto. Por ejemplo, uh, they make tortillas over there. They make. Ah, entonces tenemos siempre sujeto, verbo, complemento. Si se logra ubicar en una idea completa, siempre ordene las palabras de esta manera. Sujeto, verbo, complemento. Siempre insisto mucho en esto porque a veces siempre queremos decir eh, la time expression antes que, qué sé yo, el verbo, ¿verdad? por ejemplo. Las expresiones, los adverbios tienen su propia ubicación, así como en español, la sintaxis de la oración, ¿verdad? Sabemos que un sujeto, luego decimos el objeto directo, el indirecto, y si ya nos metemos en gramática, ¿verdad? Pero en una forma de comunicación, ¿verdad? No vamos a ser lingüistas ¿verdad? ahorita, porque queremos nada más comunicar ideas y entender ideas, Sepa siempre, subject, verb, complement. 
¿Le preguntan algo? No, se queda en blanco. Vamos. Subject, verb, complement. Subject, verb, complement. And that's the basic. ¿Ok? Hagamos un ejemplo. Va, vamos a ver. Yo le pregunto, when do you eat lunch? ¿Mm? I eat... I eat mm -hmm. the lunch mm -hmm. and 12, 12 at noon, I remember. At noon, yeah, at noon. That's good. Mm -hmm. I eat lunch at noon. And in todos lugares sabemos que at noon is 12 mm, in the oh. middle day, right? 12, 12 p.m., right? 12 p.m., so at noon, yeah. I will ask you another question, right? Mm -hmm. Why do you study English? English. I study English because I need no English. Because tenemos una coma. I need. Ahora no. regresamos al subject, right? Because no. I. Mm -hmm. Because need. I need, I need uh -huh. for the work. Okay. I need el que. ¿Qué necesita? Este sí necesita el objeto ahí. Need it mm -hmm. uh, for my job. Okay. There you sure. go. Siempre va a ir ordenando de esa manera. Póngale que fuera negativo. Convertamos esa eh, respuesta en negativa. ¿sí? I study English. I study English uh, even I don't need it for my job. Okay? Principally I don't. Mm -hmm. Oh, siempre. En este caso, sí. En el tiempo presente simple, sí. Mira, tenemos oh. I don't. Siempre cuando sea negativo, I don't. Cuando sea el verbo to be, I am not, ¿verdad? Y las contracciones de toda la conjugación del verbo be, ¿verdad? De acuerdo al sujeto. Ahora, si estuviéramos hablando de una tercera persona, si nos preguntan, por ejemplo, uh, ¿qué le puedo preguntar? Uh, de su jefe, por ejemplo. Uh, why does... Uh, esa misma pregunta. No, otra. Pongamos otra. Why does your boss... Um, late to the office. Okay. Why does your boss come late to the office? Uh -huh. Puedo, el why siempre se contesta como usted me contestó ahí, because, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Pero, pero se puede iniciar por ejemplo, uh, así como inició la anterior, sí. Uh, uh -huh. Y como ya puse esto de inglés, because. Exactly. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Aquí puede poner he. He come late. Ajá, pero es tercera persona. Le tenemos que manejar el verbo en tercera persona. He comes. ¿Verdad? Okay. Con la S. He comes late to the uh -huh. office. Because, yeah. claro que sí, puede contestar así. Uh -huh. Because, y luego otra vez el sujeto, right? Because, y, uh -huh. y, y, lejos. Far. Hmm? Oh, far. 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 He lives far. Okay. Far. Le podemos poner from work. Okay. From from right? something like that. From work. There you go. He lives far from work. Yeah. Y así siempre recuerde poner el sujeto, el verbo y el complemento en orden. ¿sí? A veces 
Nosotros queremos decir cosas que no sabemos, pero mi consejo es que regresemos a lo que sí sabemos y utilicémoslo. Por ejemplo, eh, si yo sé que no me voy a acordar de far o en el momento no recuerdo far, pero recuerdo near, por ejemplo. Uso near because he, li he doesn't live near. Yeah? O sea, busco usar lo que sé y lo que recuerdo, ¿sí? Y poco a poco ya voy a ir como avanzando porque después uno se queda pensando y dice, ¡Eh! hubiera dicho esto, sí, yo sabía decir esto, ¿ok? Y ya uno va armando su vocabulario que va necesitando en el contexto en que usted se maneje, ¿verdad? Porque puede ser que en su área no es lo mismo que en mi área, ¿verdad? Puede ser que otro compañero suyo se desempeñe con otro vocabulario más común o otro vocabulario más técnico, no sabemos, ¿verdad? Entonces, usted no puede depender del vocabulario de otro para mi trabajo, porque mi trabajo es mi entorno, ¿sí? Entonces, voy agarrando de mi entorno, a menos que hagamos exactamente lo mismo. Ahí sí, nos complementamos, ¿verdad? Y yo le copio y él me copia y nos damos como, eh, eh, ¿cómo decirle? Como siguiendo un manual, ¿verdad? Pero de lo contrario, no. Nosotros vamos armando nuestro vocabulario de acuerdo a cómo nosotros nos manejamos, en nuestro contexto, en nuestro ambiente, más en el ambiente de trabajo. Por ejemplo, no es lo mismo lo que miran los contadores a lo que una secretaria puede hacer, ¿verdad? O a lo que eh, alguien de comunicaciones haga, alguien de marketing, ¿verdad? Cada uno tiene su propio vocabulario que aprender, ¿sí? Entonces, la, lo que debe de buscarse es, eh, si estas son las tres cosas, okay, si estas son las tres cosas, aprender del sujeto bien, bien, ¿verdad? aprender del verbo bien, bien, los tres tiempos que hemos visto ahorita han sido presente simple, presente continuo, hemos visto el pasado ahorita y vimos la voz pasiva, ¿verdad? Que ya vimos el pasado participio un poquito, la voz pasiva. Ya con eso uh, podemos comunicar bastantes ideas. No las podemos comunicar todititas, pero sí podemos comunicar hasta unos, unas formas del futuro con el tiempo presente simple y con el eh, presente continuo, ¿verdad? Entonces, si usted se enfoca en, eh, digamos, afinar bien las formas de los verbos, ya la hizo. Ya sabe unir un sujeto y un verbo. No importa el tiempo que sea la oración que usted va a decir, ¿verdad? Porque ahorita ya sabe el ING, ya sabe el ED, ya sabe también los irregulares del pasado, ya sabe el past participle, ¿verdad? Y sabe el tiempo presente simple y las terceras personas, ¿verdad? Con el es, IES, IES, ¿verdad? Entonces, si usted se afina eso bien, bien, y afina bien bien los sujetos. En los sujetos lo que usted tiene que fijarse es plurales, singulares, ¿verdad? Porque si es plural, do. Si es plural, are, ¿verdad? Si es singular, is. Y si es singular en el presente simple de otros verbos que no son di, does. Entonces, hay que manejar esas cuestiones para no sentirse que uno está cometiendo error. Porque en realidad, eso es lo que nos pone un poquito a pensar, pero media vez se enfoca en sujeto y verbo, ya le hicimos, ahí vamos. Complemento ya sería time expressions, colores, características, cosas que a veces hasta podemos odiar. ¿no? All right. Okay. Uh -huh. I hope this explanation uh, was helpful. All right. Sí, sí. Okay. Igual este, ahí Pienso yo que también es una manera de ampliar el, ese, en el tema de aprenderse las palabras. Ajá. Más palabras. Exacto. Pero para uh -huh. aprenderse palabras, yo siempre sugiero que no se las, se empiece a aprender cualquier palabra. Uh -huh. Sino que, por ejemplo, enfocado. Palabras relacionadas con sujetos, por ejemplo. Animales, cosas, eh, pero por como por grupos, para que se nos vaya quedando un poquito por, más. Por ejemplo, cosas del día a día. ¿verdad? Ah, exacto, cosas de su entorno. Uh -huh. Los verbos, actividades que usted hace constantemente, ¿verdad? 
ajá, no se va a poner a estudiarlo de un doctor, ¿verdad? sino que va a hacer los verbos que usted usa diariamente. ¿verdad? Ajá. Y los complementos siempre sabemos, presente, pasado y futuro. Ya, yeah. ahí está. Uh -huh. Los time expressions que son los que más usamos en el campo. Mira. Ok. Are we okay so far then? Yes. No more questions? For the moment, no. <laughs> okay then. Okay, it has uh it has been uh it has been a very um enriching experience talking to you. All right, so um, see you Monday. All right. Have okay. a very good see night. You too. Good night. See you.